buddy. How you doing? JP Moss here. Um, my last video, I said that I would um, touch on that subject matter of um, what is my connection to Benico in the physical sense. Um, Benico is an extraterrestrial human hybrid, as I said, visited me in Texas via the American military intelligence community header. And as I've said, and it's becoming very clear to me after speaking to some physicists who have interviewed me, uh, a gentleman, I, I mean, I'm not going to put names out here, don't, don't believe it or not, um, that they do believe and these people had connections to CERN, Large Hydrogen Collider, and all like that. They they are believing it's it's very possible that I am from um, another Earth universe reality where contact with aliens or ETs, extraterrestrial human hybrids, is more lucrative than in this reality. Um, far more lucrative, or maybe even in the sense where things are allowed that aren't really allowed so much here at all. It's absolute zero here. Uh, and I may be here through that extraordinary connection to this uh, very special girl. And so it jets back to my beginnings, which purport and allege to be and that's the best legal and responsible way to say that without saying, I know that for a fact. I don't have empirical evidence to that end on that side of things. Am I that woman's son from California? Um, I, I can't say that 100%, and I don't ever expect you to believe it because, folks, listen, I don't sit around saying it to myself all day with a full 100%, that's absolutely true. I'd, I'd like to see evidence, too. I'm always open to DNA tests. To the family that raised me in Texas, uh, you know, that purports to be my maternal family, paternal family, it's on my birth certificate. Uh, on my birth certificate, there's an extraordinary uh, signature from an orthopedic surgeon who still practices today after 45 years. He was a junior doctor in his 20s. I will say that. Uh, just as a, as a footnote in this video, it's only a footnote, and he's an orthopedic surgeon. And I was alleged to have been born the 23rd of April, 72, and he signs the birth certificate so that I could be taken from the hospital in John Peter Smith, Texas, to go home with that family on the 24th of April. Because you have to have a surgeon, some doctor has to sign the birth record before the baby can be released. Or at least that's what I, I understand it. Um, I know you can go back and get a birth certificate like 30, I think it's 30 days to get a birth record. But for some reason, I wasn't going to be released anywhere out of that hospital until someone signed it. Well, it's not anybody in, in the delivery team. It's not anybody in the, in the whole third floor of the John Peter Smith delivery wing. Nobody. Um, it's an orthopedic surgeon who was practicing on the fourth floor. Now, why would an orthopedic surgeon sign a birth record for a newborn? Well, they just couldn't find the delivery team, the delivery doctors, a pediatrician, uh, your OBG, your, your doctor, nobody, wherever they at, all out to lunch. So you look up this man on my birth certificate, his full name is there, everything about him. You can then verify he's in Houston. He is still practicing and has always practiced orthopedic medicine. Has never delivered a baby in his life. You ask him, he will say that. I've never delivered a baby in my life. So why was he signing a birth certificate? A junior doctor. So he would have been like 20, he was early 20s. This guy was, uh, uh, you know, 20s, straight out of med school. So that's a weird one. Uh, so in any case, I will come right to the point, because I'm, I don't want to make a long, 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 long video. 
because uh, I tend to get emotional, and I don't I don't really want to do that. I don't want to start getting emotional because uh, it just um, it just come come to the point. I was told by Benico that. She is, in fact, older than me. They do live about 300 years. So she was created by the Zetas, I guess, in the 1960s. I, you know, and I was 50s, 60s. I was not around then. And somehow or other, they had her then. Um, extracted some of her DNA. They, they, they knew that... This race had a very highly reparative DNA, which means the DNA repairs itself very quickly from injury. Not major stuff like bones, teeth, major organs. It, it, it's, it's like soft tissues, muscle, tendons. Uh, and have a very high endurance, high tolerance. Not a lot of high strength, but high endurance. And uh, they were experimenting with the genetic material from her and others like her. And she told me that, in fact, uh, I had her DNA in me. And that was because when I was alleged to have been taken from that woman in California, for whatever reason, whether it's to cover up an affair baby with that actor Roy, or was it, you know, for extortion, blackmail, it, it, it's, it's, it's relative to that. It's very interesting because you have to know, you really, I, that was something I'm never going to know exactly why I came out of California as a mystery. The story I'm initially given from that was I was taken as a blackmail and you get the baby back if you pass millions. Well, okay. Then the next thing becomes consistent. Okay, so I was then injected with either some of the blood from her in, in, when I was an infant, or I'm not really sure how the genetic transfer got got in me. I know that they were aware of genetic transfer sciences in the CIA in the 1960s. Some of those documents have come to light. They were studying this. But it was in its infancy. They really didn't understand a lot about these sort of things. And they were carrying over a lot of the illegal research from the Nazis from the 1940s into America under Project Paperclip. And that's out there, too. You can look that up. So very unethical, immoral stuff going on here uh, covertly. So even as far back as the 40s, genetic research was something that, that was known about. Well, in any case, they found... Hey, why don't we try to put this in people? Well, it's alleged that the ones that abducted me gave me some of this material, genetic material, from her so that I would survive the abduction from California. Apparently, I was worth a lot of money. And uh, so you got a baby that's probably going to be worth to you 20 to $50 million for his return. Um... So that, I'm just going to throw that out there today in this, this video. Uh, I don't have any empirical evidence of those events. However, in later life, uh, I was seen by a doctor here in England that I, I was 27. And I was having some issues with skin peeling all over my body, like a snake losing his, his skin, his exoskin or something. And I was having dehydration, very serious issues with it. And the doctor wanted to do a full blood work on me. He didn't have any history on me. I had a sister-in-law who had Batten's disease at the time. And so all the brother-in-laws were genetically tested to see if they had carried anything. Because I was making children with her sister, my ex-wife. And uh, so this doctor wanted to do a full blood screening and genetic screening. And, and here in England, it doesn't cost anything. The doctors are free of charge. So they extracted a tremendous amount of blood out of my arm. <laughs> I mean, they walked in with a needle this big, stuck it. My... Nurse wasn't very, very friendly. Zero bedside manner. That's a bit of subject for another video. Uh, you know, it's really scary stuff. They're very, very unfriendly because you're not paying for this, and the government is, so they don't really care. 
Well, this is bother. This frightens you. <laughs> Sit still, mate. And they, you know, she pulled this blood out. Well, about three weeks later, my wife says, "You want to query that to find out what happened on those results?" She says, "Usually, get the results in the in the post or the mail." I'm using some British words here for my American listeners. Um, so I, I called the surgery. They said, you need to come down immediately. Something's come up. And I saw my doctor, and quickly to the point, he just said, very calmly, black and white, like, like uh, I'm going to sound like a total Trekkie nerd here, but he says, without any feeling, he just says, yes, uh, your genetic results have come back. There is a percentage of you that could not be identified. 12 to 14% of me was unidentifiable. And... Um, he was very calm about that. He never called it alien DNA. And uh, the other doctor poked her head in. And Jason, who's your mother? Well, the conclusion they were coming to was a very prosaic, down-to-earth explanation. Two, two possibilities. He said, either you're the world's first surrogate baby, because surrogates, surrogate babies have genetic material left over from the sack of the mother that carried someone else's baby in her stomach. And that's going to be pretty common to come up in a genetic test like that. Uh, it's not junk DNA. It's living DNA. It's actually functioning DNA. It wasn't anything like, like junk left over. He made that very clear to me. It wasn't junk or anything like that. But then um, he, he, they ruled that out. She, and he said that that was 1972. You would have been the world's first surrogate. And in history, 1985 is the world's first surrogate. He said the technology wasn't around. And I was very, very, very anxiety. Well, well, what am I? And he says, well, what do you mean, what are you? Well, well, why ask me a question like that? It's very silly to ask a question like that. You're a person. You're a... He says, then, then I, I said, well, how do you account for this? And he says, we think that you were switched at birth and you were breastfeeding from a mother who was not your mom, and you've ended up with her DNA in, in you. Uh, now, I've passed that under the nose of medical people and geneticists, and they, they, they bunk, they debunk that. No, 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 that couldn't happen, that couldn't happen. But that was his explanation. Then he says, we aren't taking this any further. The London Medical Center wanted me to come down immediately by train. And he said, you're a, a young father with young kids. I only had two kids then. He says, you've got some anxiety issues about all this. He says, I don't want this disrupting your life. I have to protect you as a patient. So I'm going to cancel you here and now as my patient and put this into patient services records and shelve it on the shelf so they don't, they, don't get the, they don't get this. You have to leave now. The receptionist had under orders was already contacting people who were sending a taxi to take me down by train. Uh, so government, British government, was, was hot to trot on this and wanted me to come down immediately. It was the same hospital in London that researched and had the, the man known as the Elephant Man, John Merrick, in the 1800s, the, the famous John Merrick, known as the Elephant Man. It was the very famous London hospital. They wanted me down there. Uh, uh, they were very like, what is this? So, who am I? Well, when I go to work, typically I can work hard a lot. Now, um, I don't like to admit this on YouTube or videos, but I do have an injury uh, which impedes some of my abilities to work that may require an operation at some point. But other than that, uh, so I'm not Superman or X-Man. Uh, but I do, I do repair. I'm 46 years old. Look at me. You know, a lot of people say, you're not 46. And I, I, I am an extremely high-endurance individual. The injury is from uh, I hurt myself lifting heavy objects. I'm not I'm not like super strong, but I'm extremely good at long, long endurance work. So I can clean for miles and miles, Hoover for miles and miles in a vacuum, or get a gas strimmer and strim for 20 miles without taking a breath. You know, most people just fall flat in their face. So it, it pays off in dividends whatever this is. And when I was a volunteer firefighter for the, in, in Texas, um, I, a lot of people benefited from that. On hot, hot, 144 Celsius, 105 degree weather, I was out there fighting fires, saving lives, where most people just kept falling down and passing out. So I've managed, and I was in a search and rescue team, I've managed to put this to good use. 
if it's true. Uh, whatever the DNA is, I've managed to put it to good use. So my connection to her is familial, it's family, uh, love, in the heart and physical. I do believe her. I am a part of her. She's not my mother. In a, I think we spoke about in that sense, in some sense, she spoke a lot about morals and ethics, uh, that they're very deeply morally centered race that she did say in some regard that she was in the capacity of mom because she comes before me and that this is her DNA. Um, that she said that I am not your mother and I don't see you as my son, uh, but the love is multi-sided love and that there is a very passionate love between us, deep, compassionate soul, shared soul. And she was very happy to hug me the night I met her on the road that night. She was very, very happy. I could feel that. She was very, very... And she said to me, you are one of us. You're not one of them. Remember, you're never one of them. You're one of us. Um, and I, I don't mind if, if you don't believe that. That's that's fine. Um, I, don't, I don't mind that. I, I like sharing. I like talking about it. It's like standing on a hilltop shouting, I love you, and I, she loves me, and everyone's going to either drive down the road and either believe that idiot or Good for you. You found you've got love there in your life, but I I don't think people take notice either way. Um. Yeah, I mean it's it's you know I've I've wanted to get more testing done. I have four sons to consider. I think just for the crude, brutal side of ufology, to get evidence, they're always clawing at evidence. I'd be open to that, but again, it, it, it's like it runs away from what Dr. John Mack talked about. We need, to get, we need to start from the heart and soul connection to them in this field and reach out in that way and love them and love, feel the love back. There's another race that loves us. They're out there. And reach out in that regard, not so much with our cameras and some science. What, what does that really accomplish, having car, hard, cold nut and bold evidence. Who does that, what, what does that prove? To who? To what audience? To who? To what? What do you do with that? Uh, well, okay, it sells more books. It does a nice conference. You, you're right, they're wrong, and there's a cover-up. So, uh, I think contact is, is a gradual process, and it's going to take time. It gradually, the sun rises over this planet with light eventually illuminating everybody. It may be illuminating parts in the government pretty pretty strongly, and they all know this, what's going on. They have all their files and all the rest. But eventually it's going to reach around. And that's my video. Uh, like I said, if I waffle on too much, I'll start going on about the, the immense feelings I have, and, and I'm going to start crying. Uh, but it is, it, is a Mand it is part of the Mandela Effect, because this, these events happen in another reality. Uh, they didn't happen in this reality. They, and in fact, I'm not from this earth reality in that sense. I'm not from this earth. This is, another, this is a parallel earth. And I've fallen into this one. But I don't think anything's by accident. And if you believe in God, or whatever runs this universe, I, I, don't, I don't think maybe some higher advanced alien race, even beyond them, uh, stepped in and, and has, has put this into being maybe spread it about so that disclosure is going to be something that spreads around other realities. Um, for overall, the human race is very special and deserves a fighting chance to survive and live. And everybody deserves a special contact like this. Everybody deserves um, that special love in their life. It's good to be loved. It's good to love. It's good to share love. It's good to be a part of love. And it's good to have something to share. Very beautiful and very sweet and warm and loving and tender. It's, it's a wonderful experience in of itself. And it doesn't really matter where we come from. It doesn't matter. It makes absolutely no difference what our DNA is.